What's going on, everybody? Welcome to G Myers World, and today we're going to be discussing a feud that's been going on with Mike Mac. He's a Madden YouTuber and uh, gaming powerhouse. We know him. Um, I've actually done videos with him in the past. Uh, we're going to be talking about some of the things that Madden 17 has been bringing out of individuals. Now, I'm not going to say, you know, I agree with, you know, like I can't take either side because I understand what both of these individuals are trying to do. But I want to say this, though. It's not like Mike Mack is the first guy to try to be positive about change with Madden. So let me just get that out the way because people are not able to distinguish what's actually happening. And as we know, a lot of people, they don't understand the depths in which it goes to. You know, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Gaming Powerhouse has been around a lot longer than Mike Mack. I didn't even look into um, any of the things as far as, like, how long he's been doing YouTube or whatever like that, but... I know Gaming Powerhouse has been grinding for a very, very long time. Uh, with that being said, they both have their viewpoints. Now, just looking at it, um, you guys can see, look, Mike Mack pretty much said that it is the worst Madden that he's ever played. He did say that. So in his defense, he did say what a lot of other people have been saying, but it's kind of been a, a little bit more or less toned down because like Mike Mack is trying to explain, if you continue to degrade the product is going to affect your pockets so everybody pretty much loses but in in gaming powerhouse's defense when you kind of it's sort of like this like february black history month right shortest month of the year we all understand that when you're dealing with things like anything that has to do with political or racial divide and stuff like that there are different ways to go about it like i have family members that are police officers that don't like that the black lives movement made it all about black people okay um me being a person of color it's like yo what the f are you talking about pretty much what they're saying is it makes their job more dangerous because it makes it look like everybody's just trying to kill black people when it's in you know it's in specific areas so pretty the, the whole argument is what i have to say is just because i'm in new york city that doesn't mean that i don't feel it when somebody in another state is harmed you know due to whatever is going on you know what I'm saying? I, it, it's sort of like this. You can you can say, yeah, we need to train police officers better, but it doesn't stop the fact that these things are going to happen. And you can take it one way or the other. You could be like, yo, yo, bro, you know, um, everybody is not like that. Or, you know, it's only happening in this part. But does that make it better that it's only happening in one part? It shouldn't be happening in any parts. So pretty much what's going on with the whole situation is this. It's like, yo, Mike Mack is trying to say, look, the game needs to get better, and complaining doesn't do anything. That doesn't make any sense, though, in, in my opinion, because everybody that speaks positive about something is not going to get changed. Let's just get that out the way. And that's what I'm saying. It, it's sort of like this. I don't know if, you know, most of the people are going to be oblivious to the fact that just saying positive things doesn't change anything, which is why Michael Jordan, as a, when he was with the Bobcat, well, what was he doing? I forgot what team was he with first before he moved to another team where he just had yes men and Charles Barkley was going at him. When you only have yes men, you don't get good production. So all I'm saying is we do have to work together to get change, but everybody is not going to be peachy about it because it's a, yo, Madden 17 really, really, Madden is probably the only game where you really take it with you to work, you, you know, with your relationship, with your, with, with, you know, your spouse, what, whatever you're doing, you take it with you because the game is just so infuriating, the things that go on with it. This is what I'm trying to say. It's, yeah, I can't even really explain how Madden has changed, um, you know, the way that I feel about gaming. And like I said, we've all been in constant contact with people from EA Sports. You know, shout out to, uh, you know, Rex Dixon. You know, he, he's been heavily involved. He responds to people. He talks to people. He does things that help, you know, as far as the patches and the things like that by putting them out. Not saying that the patches work. I'm saying that they do show that they're trying to fix certain things. For instance, the fullback jumping 95 feet in the air, the Jimmy Graham jump. You remember the Jimmy jump earlier in the year? That's an example of something that Madden fixed because now if you try to jump, it's automatically a fumble. So you may say to yourself, you know what, that doesn't make any sense for them to make it automatically a fumble, but that was something that was being abused within the game that they changed. You understand what I'm saying? So they do do things. They, they, they do do things that's trying to, you know, help. It's just that the things that they do, sometimes it gets a little, it's like over the top. Because technically, you don't, it's not always going to be a fumble when somebody dives over the top, but that's what they did to stop it. Um, you know, things like... Um, you know, nano protection and stuff like that, nano detection. 
that doesn't make any sense. But that's something that was needed because a lot of people complain about the heat. But you can't complain about that in the real NFL. That's what the issue is. So, you know, pretty much like Rex Dixon uh, replies in the statement, they have to look at all... It's very annoying. Listen, as, as, a, as, a, as a person that hires and fires individuals in myself, it's very annoying when you can't get to the root of the problem. Okay? So if somebody comes to me with a complaint, right? I'm, I'm just going to go based on what I do. If somebody comes to me with a complaint, the first thing that I do is I have to assess the person that's doing the complaint to make sure, like, yo, is this person a douche or is he not a douche? Is she a douche? Is she not a douche? Because it doesn't matter who brings the complaint. You got, I got to know because... I affect other people's lives. So I can't just be like, all right, you know what? You're right. Let me just go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and lay this person off. I can't do that. You understand what I'm saying? So I have to look at it. So let's look at it from EA Sports point of view, right? They get a lot of complaints about a lot of things that's going on. The problem is the majority of the things that are being put in and, and that are being thrown at their doorstep is BS. I agree with that. So it's hard for them to kind of dissect what's going on because it's like, yo, if everybody is saying this, like, Madden 16, oh, yo, the pressure, the heat, the heat, the heat. When Madden 16 was first released, I had no issues with that game. The SWAT button worked. Um, the blitzes could be blocked. It could be slide protected when you knew where it was coming from. I had no issues with Madden 16. I'm on record saying that when the, the game first came out, everything was good. People started to complain about the A-gap blitzes. So EA patched it, and then it got really, really crazy. The game just went wild after that. Now it was three-man heat that was coming in instead of the four and five. So what you do, those type of things, I can't... Listen, if, if, I'm at a, if I'm an EA Sports representative, right, I can't look at the game itself based on what people that don't understand what slide protection are doing. I, I can't go on their feedback. I have to look at it like, all right, you guys have game changers and guys that understand how the matter mechanics. You have a lot of people that play this game. Um... You can, you can find out if the blitzing and the A-gaps were really that big of an issue. Because in my opinion, as a guy, I've been playing Madden for such a long time. So when, when I look at it from my point of view, from where like 2002, when they really had a nano till now, Madden 16, those, th th that was nowhere near a nano. But now when you're looking at, you, you know, you look at certain things and then you start to understand like, wait a minute, the people that are determining how the game gets patched don't really understand what's going on because these things are slidable. So in my opinion, if you teach them, you know, you know, shout out to like Zan and those guys, um, you know, Madden Progression, the, they try to teach you how to do the things that are within the game to help protect what was created. You don't alter the creation. That's what the thing is. And you guys got to understand before you get mad at gaming powerhouse that it's, it's, I, it's a lot of frustration because he's tried to do the right thing. And if you go back through his timeline, when he and Rex have actually discussed a lot of things that were going on, I played Game of Powerhouse and swerved him to win the game. Now, I'm going to swerve whoever. Listen, I'll swerve my moms. I'm not saying that I have sympathy because I swerved him. I'm saying that it's something in the game that's like, okay, the defense should be able to respond. The defense should not react the way the receiver's reacting. I understand that. I was sending heat that he couldn't block, blocking everybody on his team. That might be an issue. I've played real football. I know when I was blitzing, you know, somebody was going to get free, but we were sending a lot more than I'm sending in the game. Obviously, it's a game. You can't really correlate it because it's a video game, whatever like that, because I know how to block my own blitz, but it's just like, all right, if I'm blocking seven people, it should pick up a four or five-man blitz. So I understand that. And now again, with what Mike Mack is saying, Mike Mack is speaking on a corporate level. Corporate level, they don't really... They don't really pay much attention to a lot of the stuff that I'm doing right now that's trying to get the information out to like kind of make people understand what's happening. They look at the bottom line, which is the dollar. So the game is selling. It doesn't matter. Guys, like, like I said, I, I, I interviewed Rex Dixon. Shout out to Rex Dixon again for doing that interview before Madden 17 was created. So I, I was able to speak to him and tell him point of, you know, my point of view. We spoke several times at, you know, outside of you know, YouTube and things like that. He understood my point of view, and he understood my frustration. But at the end of the day, OBJ's catch was marketable. So why would you change it? Let me ask you guys a question. If you're making billions of dollars, 
Why would you change anything? That's where I have to step back from Mike Mack. Because the populace is good. We're going to always do what we want. We're going to always want change. We're going to always want, you know, okay, um, you know what? I don't like this. I don't like this. It's sort of like that. You, you guys play an app that you like, right? You play an app. You play the game on an app. They update it. And the game is total garbage now. That that Things are going to change based on what companies feel will make them more money. It has nothing to do in general with what the populace wants. That's just it. That's in general. No matter what, if you if you do illegal things, you do legal things. You know, supply and demand. Listen, what is do? What is selling? What's actually happening? So, in all actuality, if you're a person of color, you should understand that we we needed we needed Malcolm, you know, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and we needed Malcolm X. We wouldn't have been able to do anything without both of them. We needed somebody to say, "Yo, you slap me, I'm finna slap the f out of you back." And then we needed somebody to say, "Yo, we need to go peaceful." You can't just be all one thing. So, Mike Mac, in, in all actuality, you and GPH are actually helping the cause because you're actually doing something from different ends to get different relatable outcomes. Now, as far as Rex goes, Rex is going to be more favorable to a guy that's not doing what Gaming Powerhouse is doing because he works for the company. That makes sense. I got nothing but love for Rex, but I understand what it is. If you bash my company, I'm going to do the same thing too. I'm like, yo, I don't know what's going on, bro. You know what I'm saying? My checks is fat out here. I don't know what's going on. But at the same time, you still got to give Rex credit because he does make attempts to do things better for the actual game. But all in all, I'm just saying, this was going on all day yesterday. Then there's so many people attacking Game of Piles. Yo, bro, EA Sports needs to do this. They need to do that. Like, bro, why are you trying to threaten the man because he's giving his opinion? You know what I'm saying? It's not like he's on a United flight, you know what I'm saying, in this overbook. Like, why are you guys trying to drag him off the flight? I don't understand what's going on. This is just really, really crazy. And it's not like, you know, me and GPH have a personal relationship and we hang out and go to Starbucks and have whatever the name of those frappuccinos. I don't know the name of the drinks. But all I'm saying is you have to be logical and understand that this game has really, really frustrated a lot of the top competitors, a lot of the people that actually put their heart and soul in the game, a lot of people that really use this as, a, you know, like a competitive gamer. I watched a game where Joke, you know, he tried to he tried to pick up a pass from Bugs in a Madden tournament live on Twitch, where that animation is so ridiculous because, you know, Joke had the interception. It, it, you're going to have things that happen in the real NFL that's going to baffle you. But these things are continuous since Madden 16. It's been continuous. And we do need change. But the, the first thing that we need to do is to identify in reality what can be fixed the right way and what, is, what people are just throwing out there because they don't understand the game. I play people that don't know how to slide protect. EA Sports, when Madden 16 was first released, I had no issue with the slide protection. You guys can... Look... Do me a favor. If you watch this video, ask any Madden competitor in Madden 16 when the game first came out, did they have any problems with slide protection? Even with all the blitzing that was going on, the A-gap, stuff like that. Then ask them, after the game started being patched, what happened? That problem can be solved by people promoting education, just like in anything else. A lot of people are not educated. So you put out, you know, you use guys like Zan. You know what I'm saying? And you make, you, 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 he makes videos, you know, uh, you know, other people, Toke can make videos, QJB can make videos, TD Presents can make videos, Gaming Powerhouse can make videos, Mr. Golden Sports can make videos, I Maverick can make videos. Because those guys, if they start making videos about it, people will understand, like, all right, you know what? Maybe um, we should start to figure out how to slide protect and stop complaining about these blitzes. Because when you start to identify, EA Sports made it so you can see what side a blitz is coming from and which side is better to run to. That doesn't make any... You're not teaching anybody like that. That's like giving you the answers to the test before the test is given. People play this game competitively. So if you're going to have competitive Madden, you can't make the game the same way as it would be for somebody that's a novice. You understand what I'm saying? You can always go the route of glitching, a.k.a. Cooper 3, a.k.a. Go Live, K-O-U-P-P-A. You could always you know, teach somebody a DC glitch, but that doesn't make any sense either. Because now it's like, okay, we got we to gotta attack that. And, and to bring up the DC glitching, since the last patch, the dashboarding is back. You're getting losses from dudes just disconnecting the game. So there's a lot of other things that are going on within the game. All I'm saying is this. If we, I understand the premise of Mike Mack, and I respect him for what he's doing. But I have already done that. 
Golden po Gaming Powers House has already done that. A lot of individuals. Um, uh, uh, well, I can't remember the guy's name right now. That goes crazy. Uh, Smitty. Smitty has done that. We've tried to take the positive route. This is not nothing new. This is not the creation of the wheel. It's already been done, but I understand the premise. I understand what he's trying to say. In order to keep everybody's gains coming and everybody making money off of Madden, we should try to do it in a little bit more professional way. But what I'm saying is everybody doing it in the professional way does not always make change. And that's just history. That's just fact. And if you continuously see that nothing is changing, just like anything else, you're going to be human. You're going to react. Now, all the reaction sometimes is not always good. Terrell Owens not being inducted into the Hall of Fame and then getting his own jacket. That's not a good look. But that's what he felt he should do. That's a human flaw. Because we sometimes are so frustrated that we can't control it. But that doesn't mean that GPH is wrong. It just means that he's showing what he really feels. And in most cases, that usually, at, at first, it hurts you. But later on, it makes you successful. Because people understand where your heart was always at. It's not about always, um, you know, oh yeah, that's good, that's good, even though it's bad. Keep in mind, if your spouse, a family member always tells you that you're always right, they don't love you. Because nobody's always right. You're going to need that type of, you need some kind of feedback to make you want to be better for yourself. You need to want to do more for yourself. That's just natural fact. If you want to progress in this world, you can't always want positive feedback. So all in all, I commend both these individuals for saying what they feel, for doing what they're supposed to do and let, you know, letting everyone understand that there is a problem, but they're taking different approaches. Now, Gaming Powerhouse will eventually calm down and hopefully we'll get a better game in Madden 18. But who will get the credit? Gaming Powerhouse is not getting no credit for that. Because it doesn't matter, like, he's not the only person raging. Mike Mack isn't the only person saying, let's, let's be professional. So we don't really get credit anyway. I made videos, I made songs about the ball being thrown through my body. And it still happens. It, it, like, listen, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is that people have to voice their opinions in various ways to create change. Whose side are you on? You shouldn't be on either. You should want both. Because this is the only way we'll really get change. Share this video. Like this video. Retweet this video. Jemaya's World. One love.